Some people might look at this issue and say, there's definite final proof that act utilitarianism is the wrong ethical theory. Why would that be the case? Well, one of two reasons. First, they might say torture is always wrong, and it seems pretty clear that act utilitarianism is going to justify it. In fact, maybe act utilitarianism is going to say we should have a policy of allowing it. Right? And that just proves that act utilitarianism gets us to the wrong answers, and it's a bad moral theory. Other people might say, well, it could be justified in certain extreme circumstances, right? but right, act utilitarianism doesn't get that right. Either it doesn't get the circumstances right, or if it happens to get it right, it does so for the wrong reason. Right? So they'll basically say, look, act utilitarians are saying, well, we need to be worried about the temptation of it happening again down the road, right? when they're ignoring the fact that this is simply a violation of the person being tortured, in a way that's a problem in itself, right? completely independent of the question of the sum total of pains and pleasures produced. I'm going to say, though, that this might be too quick. Right? So dismissing act utilitarianism because it, the way it approaches the issue of torture might miss some of the subtleties of act utilitarianism. And in fact, I think Alan Dershowitz helps us understand why that might be true. So in the next several segments, I'm going to talk about what this issue, and particularly Alan Dershowitz's approach to the issue, shows us about some of the resources that act utilitarians have for dealing right, with some of these difficult cases. Right? Or more to the point, dealing with cases where they seem to obviously point to the wrong answer or the right answer for the wrong reason.